Hey everybody, welcome back. This is going to be part two of what if Luffy had the storm fruit. So, no recaps, no asking you to subscribe, let's just get right into the what if, right into part two. Join my crew, Luffy said to Zoro. Zoro gave him a blank stare and says, You do realize that they call me the pirate hunter, right? And you're asking me to join your pirate crew? Luffy simply nods at him and gives him a big smile. And Zoro says, just to get lost, he's not joining any pirate crew. He he might be a bounty hunter, but he is not scum, and he will not basically lower himself to that just to get out of here. Luffy says, alright, fine, but I'll be back, because I have a feeling that I'll be able to convince you later. And so Luffy would jump down from the wall and go over to the bar that the little girl went to with Kobe and Nami. And so after meeting up with him again, they have a little bit of a chat and just talk for a little bit until they hear a pretty arrogant sounding man walking into the bar and asking and basically just saying, like, I'm hungry and I'm not going to be paying for food, so you better serve me right now and be quick with it. Luffy, trying to ignore him because he knows how these kind of people are, is doing his best. But when Helmeppo says that he is actually going to be executing Zoro tomorrow, instead of basically letting him go in the month that was what the original deal was, Luffy gets a dark shadow over his eye and he stands up. Nami, looking at Luffy, realizes immediately what he's about to do, and Luffy would walk over and he would pull his fist back and slam it straight into Helmeppo's face. And Helmeppo, obviously not really being the strongest guy in the world, I mean, he's just a snot-nosed brat at this point, would get sent flying with a broken and bloody nose straight through the door. And Luffy, still pissed, gives the marines that were surrounding him now a glare, and immediately getting scared and feeling this sort of will forcing them back, they all run out of the bar, grabbing Helmeppo, and they start running away. Helmeppo is completely knocked out at this point. He's not even, like, conscious enough to yell that, Don't you know who my dad is? And anything like that. No, he's completely out. And so, we see Luffy going back towards the marine base. And he walks up, jumps over the wall, and is standing right in front of Zoro. Zoro looks up at him and says, Oh, it's you again? What do you want this time? Luffy looks at him and says, Helmeppo is going to execute you tomorrow. But he might, you know, increase that to today because I socked him in the face pretty good for that one. Zoro, giving a sly smirk, but then realizing what exactly Luffy just said, kind of starts panicking and is asking Luffy to free him. And Luffy gives him a grin, a pretty mischievous one, if you ask Zoro, and says, well, Maybe I'll free you if you join my pirate crew. And Zoro, realizing that he's not really going to be getting out of this situation, holds his head down and then looks back up at him and says, If you can get my swords out of the marine base, I'll think about joining you. Nodding at this, Luffy would simply disappear in a bolt of lightning, completely shocking Zoro, not really realizing exactly how he just did that, wondering if he is one of those devil fruit users that he's heard rumors about. And Luffy appears on the top of the marine base, and he looks around, wondering what is going on, and realizes that he's standing on something a little bit odd. He looks down and says, what is this ugly-ass thing, as he stomps down on it, completely shattering the giant statue that he just so happened to appear on with his lightning bolt. And, of course, Captain Axan Morgan looks up at him, and at this point, he is completely pissed, and he looks at all the subordinates and says, KILL HIM! Kill him now! And so Luffy appears next to Helmeppo, who just so happened to wake up a couple minutes before that and was trying to complain to his father to execute a certain straw hat wearing boy that he saw in town that punched him. And he grabs him, throws him over his shoulder, and asks where exactly Zoro's swords are. Pretending that he doesn't know, Luffy, getting kind of pissed at this, has his hand extend out, and a little electric shock appears in it and he moves it closer, slowly, to Helmeppo's face and says, Oh, you can do this the hard way too, if you don't like that. And so Helmeppo, getting completely terrified by this, starts yelling, I know where it is, I know where it is, okay, okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. And so Luffy continues forward and eventually arrives at Helmeppo's room. He immediately knocks him out and then thinks, looking at the room, he thinks, 
Did he lead me to the wrong room? Did I knock him out too quickly? Because the room just looks pink. It does not look like a boy's room. Until he sees three swords sitting over in the corner. And so, picking them all up because he doesn't know which one is Zoro's, he looks out the window and sees Nami and Kobe standing in front of a platoon of marines that are all aiming their guns at them. And so, Luffy realizing that he needs to help them, would disappear in a bolt of lightning and appear right in front of the three of them. They all get relieved by this, until all of them would open fire towards Luffy. Luffy would just show a grin and would just open his arms up wide, and all of the bullets would just kind of pass through him, not really doing anything, and would just fall to the ground behind him, kind of a little bit singed, and some of them were even melted a little bit. And all of the marines are completely shocked by this, until Luffy would simply disappear from their view, appearing next to Zoro, and using one of his swords to free him because i'm gonna say luffy at least he's not a swordsman but he knows how to at least use a freaking knife he's not just going to be like gumu gumu no pistol and try to punch somebody with a sword in his hand you know like what he didn't want to but after freeing zoro he hands him his swords and says i don't really know which one is yours zoro would just grin and say they're all mine and he would pull them all out unveiling the three sword style now this is going to be incredibly easy. All of the marines are complete fodder, and so is Captain Axe and Morgan to either of them, especially since Luffy is even stronger than he would be at this point, and so he literally gets a lightning bolt through the chest. Not like, you know, get like electrocuted, like it literally pierces straight through his chest, leaving a hole in it. And so Luffy and Zoro would basically become a crew now, and Nami is still kind of hesitant about whether or not she wants to join Luffy or not, but the map that she was looking for was actually stolen by the buggy pirates, and so she asks Luffy and basically says that if they go and take care of Buggy and she gets all of their treasures, she will actually join them permanently, and of course this is just an exaggeration, she'll just join them for the time being, but they don't know that yet. Luffy obviously gets a sneaking suspicion by this, but still kind of likes Nami and wants to prove to her that not all pirates are the scum that she thinks they are. And so they would be sitting at the bar, basically just talking to, I can't remember exactly what the girl's name is, but her and her mother, and they would all just be drinking, having fun, and talking. And so this is when the marines would show up and he would ask, are you guys pirates? Luffy, not really giving a single shit about what they think about him, just says, yeah, we're pirates, what about it? Marines, getting a little bit of sweat rolling down their face, would basically just tell them that they are Marines and they cannot just, you know, let them stay here and not do anything about it. Because of what they did and them freeing them from Captain Axe and Morgan, they are not going to report them to headquarters, but they still have to leave the island. People would start getting pissed at the marines for this because, you know, they're their saviors. They can't just kick them out like that. But Luffy would raise his hand. He would look at Zora and Nami and say, All right, let's go. And then he'd walk up to the bar, grab a bottle of whiskey, pay for it, and leave. Because, yes, Luffy is a whiskey drinker in this series. Because, why not? And so they go back and they find their little dinghy. Zoro looks at it and says, Is this really the boat that we have right now? Luffy looks at him, giving him a shit-eating grin, says, yeah, that's all we got so far, and they continue to leave Shellstown. And so we see them sailing off, or basically just drifting off, because they don't really have a sail, and they're not using their paddles. They're basically just using Luffy's powers of the storm fruit. And at this point, Zoro notices something that's very odd about it. He, he already knew, but he never really had the chance to ask. So, what are you? He would ask Luffy, and Luffy would look at him and just say, oh, I'm a storm person. And he would basically just, you know, have a little lightning bolt appear in his hand, along with some condensed air and some water, basically just showing the different powers that he had. He doesn't obviously use red lightning because he doesn't have to at any point yet, because that is just too overpowered for the East Blue. I'm just not going to lie about that part. And so they would head off and they start going towards the location where Nami knows that Buggy basically took over a town. And so, after a few hours of, you know, sailing through the sea, they arrive at Orange Town. And arriving at the docks, they start to realize that the town is in complete and utter shambles. Luffy gets a dark look over his face, and Nami noticing this says, this is what most pirates are. 
realizing that Luffy might be slightly different. Not really completely convinced yet, but she's kind of trying to go along with whatever act she thinks Luffy is putting up just to get on his good side. And Luffy just nods and continues to walk forward into the town until they hear a loud explosion as multiple buildings basically just get completely demolished by a large ball. And Luffy, seeing this, gets complete and utterly pissed. He knows exactly who Buggy is. He's heard stories about him from Shanks. And so he walks over towards the direction where the loud explosion came from. Seeing the dark look over his eyes, Nami and Luffy, not Nami and Luffy, Nami and Zoro would realize basically immediately what Luffy is planning on doing and follow after him kind of nervously. And so they arrive in front of a giant cannon where Buggy is standing in front of it laughing and saying, this is the power of the buggy ball, and he would light it. And so Nami and Zoro looking at this would get a cold sweat, and they would look at Luffy, who's just standing there looking calmly towards the giant cannon that is pointing right at their faces. Air would condense around Luffy's hand as he holds it out towards the front of the cannon. Nami, realizing what Luffy is planning on doing, is basically screaming at him to get out of the way. That even if he thinks that he can do this, that is not even a normal cannonball. That is something completely different. You see the giant buildings that got demolished behind us? And so they would try to move out of the way, trying to take Luffy with them, but Luffy did not budge. He just stood there in front of it. And so, with the sizzling coming to an end, the cannon would explode with a large boom, and a giant ball would be sailing towards Luffy, who calmly would catch it in his hand not even moving back from the location that he was at, because he basically just cushioned the impact with the air that was condensed around him, along with his immense physical strength that he got from not only training with Ace and Sabo, but from actually training with Garp too. And so he would catch the ball, he would basically be holding it in his hand and bouncing it up and down like some kind of toy. And he would look at him and say, you can have this back, as he reels his hand back condensing air around his hand and launching it forward, using the wind to also basically accelerate the ball that he just threw. And so, with speeds even greater than it launched out of the cannon, he would send it flying back towards the buggy pirates, basically. Their little hideout that they had. And so, only three people would be alive after this point. And that would be, obviously, Buggy, Kabaji, and Mochi, and his giant lion. Actually, no, I'm going to say the lion died from that, because Moji used it as a shield, and basically, that's exactly how the other two survived, too. They basically just used their own crewmates as a meat shield in front of them. Getting even more pissed now, Luffy would disappear, not even using a lightning bolt. He would simply use his raw speed, and he would disappear from every single one of their sights, including Zoro and Buggy, who are the fastest among them, and he would appear right in front of Buggy, and he would give him a death glare, grabbing Buggy by the throat and lifting him up into the air, as a sword would basically pass through his stomach, where, you know, Kabaji was basically just trying to save his captain. Luffy would look over at Kabaji. He'd give him a glare and says to Zoro, deal with this nuisance for me, will you? So, Zoro and Kabaji would start their fight, and... Obviously, Zoro would win, basically the exact same fight that happened in the original, but Zoro will not have that wound that he already had, so he doesn't even get injured by Kabaji in the slightest and easily defeats him, including Kabaji's tricks. He just kind of gets pissed by that, and then would end him in a single strike. Mochi, by himself, is basically nothing because, he, you know, he's like the beast tamer and he uses his beast to fight would be scared completely shitless at this point. And so, he would basically just drop to his knees, because Luffy at this point is already exuding his conqueror's hockey. He is exuding it just because of how simply pissed off he is at these scum that are right in front of him, using their own crewmates, their own Nakama, as meat shields. And Kabaji, not Kabaji, sorry, Mochi, would simply fall to the ground, foaming at the mouth, and... Buggy would have a cold sweat running down his head. He recognizes that feeling. He recognizes it from when he was on Roger's crew in the New World. And he does not know how this kid even can use that at all. He's in the East Blue of all places. And so Luffy would lift Buggy up into the air a little bit further before basically, you know, flexing his muscles. 
he would slam him down onto the ground by his face, and he would create a, basically a crater right in front of Buggy, and he would basically crush his head with this. Yes, I'm serious. Buggy is dead. Like, he's gone. Like, Luffy is just so pissed at this point that he straight up kills him. Like, he doesn't do what he did with Alveda. He doesn't do what he did. He basically is just so pissed that he just doesn't really care anymore. Like, with Luffy in the original series, no matter how mad he got, he really didn't try specifically to kill people. Like, he didn't really care if it happened, because, you know, he's just kind of sending them flying. But this Luffy is a little bit different in that regard, because he knows he has the power, and he doesn't have to send them flying in order to basically get rid of them. So, with Buggy's entire crew dead, except for Mochi, who's just kind of lying there unconscious on the ground, Nami would be completely shocked by this, realizing just how strong Luffy actually is. Like, Buggy was a big-name pirate in the East Blue, and Luffy didn't even get harmed trying to fight him. He didn't even- he was basically playing with a child, is what it kind of looked like to her. Luffy would look over at her and say, Alright, we made a deal. You can start gathering the treasures, and then we're leaving. Got it? He says it in a slightly softer tone, but Nami is still kind of frightful of Luffy at this point, just because of how simply strong he actually is. Zoro would look over at Luffy and show a grin, knowing that he was following a very powerful captain, and so a little bit of time would pass. Nami would manage to collect all of their treasures, along with a little bit, or not a little bit, but she would also collect their map that they had for the Grand Line. And so they would begin to leave. But there is a basically a mob of angry villagers that are looking at them and asking, are they part of the buggy pirates? Luffy, simply looking at them, says no, and all of them are gone now. So they can do what they want with that. And so they would basically just leave with that. They would just get on one of Buggy's different, big, a little bit bigger ship from Buggy, because they don't really need to be using the dinghy anymore along with the treasure that Nami just got. They needed a little bit more room. And so, getting on one of Buggy's ships, they would start sailing off. Luffy, not really able to use his powers anymore because he can't really put his hand in the water because of just how far away it was, would just be using his wind powers to empower the sails. Basically just constantly flowing a much stronger stream of wind into it than what would naturally be occurring. And so, they set off. Luffy looks over at Nami and says, Hey Navigator. Where are we heading to next? Getting a little bit nervous, Nami would say that they are going to head over to the Gecko Islands, and because that's basically where the nearest island is, then they also need to restock. Realizing the tone that Nami said that with, and it was obviously fearful, Luffy calms himself down, and he walks over and says, Sorry, I'm still a little bit worked up about exactly what those people were doing back there. Nami looks at him and says, That's how most pirates are. Luffy looks at her and says, No. That's not how most pirates are. It might be how mo well, it might be how most pirates are, but that's not what a true pirate is. Looking at him, she asks, then what is a true pirate? Luffy gives her a big grin and says, a true pirate is one who is sailing for freedom. Not to try to put weaker people beneath them, not to steal treasures or do anything of like that. It's to be free. To follow your dreams out into the sea and basically abandon everything that you had before, leaving your loved ones, your friends, your family, and going out to pursue your dreams on the big open sea. Looking at them in a bit of a new light now, Nami would just smile at Luffy, not really feeling the same fear that she felt for him earlier. Still, she knows that he is incredibly powerful, but she's not quite as like on her tippy toes as she was earlier with them. And so they start setting off towards the Gecko Islands. And of course, this is where we are going to meet Usopp. However, before they get to the island, Zoro notices something odd. Luffy is sitting down, basically, on the front of the ship, and he is concentrating incredibly hard while looking down at his arms. Looking over to him, he asks exactly what he is doing, and Luffy explains something that his grandpa had told him once. Yes, because Garp had explained to Luffy what hockey was and kind of explained how to train it a little bit before Luffy left to become a pirate, because he knows that he doesn't want Luffy to die. 
He obviously doesn't want that to happen. He doesn't want him to be a pirate, but he also wants Luffy to be safe. And so he explained exactly what hockey was to Luffy and said that if somebody has hockey, then they can hurt him. And getting this basically explanation and along with a little bit of explanation of what it does and how it actually works, Luffy has been trying over the past couple of months to be able to do this. And so explaining this to Zoro and what actually is he's trying to do, Zoro would get intrigued by this and asks what exactly are like the training methods for it. And Luffy looks at him and says, I don't know the exact science behind it, but at least for what I'm trying to do now, most of the time it is basically learned by getting in these like intense situations where you need it. And for observation hockey, it's basically you're basically have to wear like something like a blindfold or something of that sort and have somebody try to hit you and you basically just have to learn how to sense things around you and so getting a little bit intrigued by this Zoro would ask if he wants to try that and or that he wants to try that and Luffy would nod and say well do you want to try observation then because I haven't really been able to practice that because I haven't really had somebody to train with me for it Zoro nodding at this would ask Luffy wear like something like a blindfold or something of that sort would be and pulling one out Luffy would put it on his head and say try to hit me but with the blunt end of your sword or no it doesn't matter what am I talking about he's a logi uh, I keep forgetting about that but <laughs> so he basically tells Zoro to try and hit him and so this is where we see Luffy getting whacked over the head constantly by his sword or basically like phasing through him and occasionally he would be able to sense something. He would be able to basically be able to dodge before Zoro is able to hit him. And at, over time, over, you know, a couple hours of them doing this, both of them start to get the hang of it a little bit better. And of course, Nami would notice this and ask what they're doing, and Luffy would explain it to her too. And Nami would say that maybe she'll try that sometime later, but right now she doesn't really want to because she sees what they're doing. And doesn't want to basically get beat up like the two of them are doing and you know kind of getting a little bit amused by this they would simply nod and continue to train and after a while both of them would be able to dodge around three to four hits before they would get hit and you know repeat that process a little bit they'd be able to use it slightly but not quite you know they don't really have observation hockey but they're getting to that point where they're almost there and so, they would arrive at the Gecko Islands. So, as they're beaching their ship, they would notice something. Luffy would be the first one to notice it, almost being able to sense it before he even spoke to them. They would see a young man standing on top with a bunch of pirate flags basically flaring all around the island, or six of them in specific. <laughs> and he would basically say he is the captain of the Great Usopp Pirates, and they need to get out of there because he has 10 million men and he is the ruler of this island and they will not be able to touch it. Looking over, Luffy and Nami would both say at the same time, the whole three of them. And so they see three kids jump up and start running away. Usopp would say, okay, maybe I exaggerated a little bit, but I still have many pirates, but, you know, beneath me. And they would say, you don't have anybody next to you. Realizing that they completely saw through his lie and not just saw the three of them, he would realize that they are a little bit stronger than he had anticipated and a little bit more determined to basically beach where they were. And he would pull out his slingshot and say that I am better with a slingshot than most are with a gun. And he would be basically trying to threaten them and Luffy would grin. And he would say a line that he had heard Shank say on one occasion. That isn't for threats, that's for an action, as he would basically give Usopp a glare. And Usopp, having cold sweat running down his face because Luffy also released a little bit of his conqueror's spirit at this time, would be shaking at the legs and sweating profusely. And Luffy and Zoro would basically be giving him a glare while Nami's a little bit confused, until both of them burst out laughing and say, and Luffy would say, Hey, you're Usopp, right? I heard about you from your dad, Yasop, on where, on my island. And Usopp, completely tripping over himself at this point, would fall down the cliff and land on his head. 
getting up with pretty much no effort, and not even really injured, he would basically look up and says, you know my dad? And Luffy would nod and pull out a bottle of whiskey, taking a sip from it, and says, let's talk over food. And so they arrive at a restaurant on the island, and they are basically having a conversation. And he asks, so you, so you knew my dad, right? What, what was he like? And Luffy would grin at him and say, your dad was awesome. He was the marksman on Shanks' crew back when he visited my island in Pusha, Pusha Village. And he would basically explain that he could shoot the fly, the wings off of a fly's back without even looking. And Usopp, getting excited by this, then says, Did he ever, did he ever talk about me? And Luffy would grin at him and say, Oh, of course he did. That's basically all I ever heard about from him. He was always talking about you. I basically felt like I knew you from the moment I saw you. And Usopp, getting kind of excited by this, would look at him and say, Oh, that's, <laughs> that's good to hear. And Luffy, not really beating around the bush, would simply ask him, Do you want to join my crew as the marksman? Usopp, getting a little bit nervous, but also a little bit excited by this prospect, would say, I, I, I really do want to, but can you give me some time to think about it? And Luffy would simply nod at him, and then Nami would ask, Do you happen to have a place where we could get a ship around here? And Usopp, you know, obviously knowing exactly where he could, was trying to decide whether or not to lie to these people or not. And thinking that he probably didn't want to because of the fact that they seemed like really nice people, he would say he does, but they can talk about that later. And he would say, but I have to go somewhere for the time being. And he would get up and run out of the restaurant that they were in. And a few moments later, the three little kids that were with them would run in as well, and they would ask, where is Captain Usopp? And looking at them, and seeing the meat that Luffy and Zora were both eating, they would say they would basically come to their own conclusion, and they would say, "You ate him!" As they send their shark teeth towards Nami, who would bonk them over the head and ask, "Why you're looking at him, or why you're looking at her?" And so this similar scene would begin to play out, and they would ask where exactly Usopp was, and they explained that they, he probably went up to the mansion to visit his friend called Kaya. And so, we see a, another similar scene play out where they head up towards the mansion, jump over, and we get introduced to Kaya and her illness along with her butler, Krahador. Getting a bit of a strange feeling from this man because of just his actions and along with his aura that he has just seemingly around him, they would get into a little bit of an argument with Usopp. And, of course, Clahodor would be insulting Usopp, just trying to get, basically, a rise out of him, and he would start insulting Usopp's father. And, of course, this is exactly what it would take for Usopp to punch him in the face. And, at this point, Luffy realizes something. He saw Clahodor's eyes calmly looking at the punch coming towards him and allowing it to hit him. He could obviously tell, and obviously he could also see the way that his face didn't really even get injured by that, that this guy was incredibly suspicious at this point. But they decide to leave it for now, and Usopp would run out, basically, and they would follow after him until Usopp would once again get asked the question if he wants to ask or if he wants to join Luffy's crew. He basically would say that he still needs more time and would get up and start walking away. And following after him, after a certain amount of time, he would find Usopp, or we would find Usopp and Luffy, talking, sitting on the edge of a cliff, looking over at the sea. They would be having this conversation, and Usopp would be basically about to tell Luffy that he can't leave, he can't just abandon everything that he has here. However, something below catches their attention, and that is, of course, Krahado, or what we know as Captain Kuro, would be talking to a strange man that we know as Django, and they would be having a conversation that completely and utterly shocks the two boys standing above, along with giving them a wealth of information to go on, and that would be the fact that, um, Krahad I can't remember his frickin' name half the time, it's like, <laughs> or like his fake name. Well, we'll do, I'm just going to call him Kuro for the time being, just because it's a little bit shorter and a little bit easier. We see Captain Kuro talking to his subordinate, basically about how he ba was basically trying to get the fortune of the mistress, and he was actually the one 
that was also trying to make her sick and trying to keep her weak, and that they were going to invade, and Django was going to basically hypnotize her in order to sign over her will and all of her money over to him. And so, realizing this, Usopp would get up and immediately run into the village, while Luffy would decide to follow after him a little bit more subdued, and he would meet up with the rest of his crew and explain the situation until they see Usopp limping back, with blood dripping down from his arm as he says that they didn't believe me. Not even Kaya believed me. He would be kind of depressed by this, but also a determination would light up in his eyes as he says that he was going to defend the island, even if he had to do it alone. However, Luffy, being the nice guy that he is, and also wanting Usopp to join his crew, would say that they were going to stay and help as well. And so, we see them basically gearing up and getting ready at one of the two locations, with, you know, because Usopp didn't mention that there were two, and they would be sitting there at sunrise, and they'd be wondering what was going on until Usopp realizes something. They could, they could be on the opposite end of the island. Luffy, glaring at him, would say, and you didn't think to mention that beforehand? And so Usopp would start sprinting off in the direction of, you know, that area, and Nami would start to run too. However, Luffy would appear in front of her, grabbing her, carrying her, and basically like a princess carry, and start running a lot faster than Nami could even imagine somebody to be running. She would see trees flying past them along the road, along with buildings, and she would realize that they were going so fast that she could barely even see what was going on. She'd be screaming and trying to punch Luffy in the chest, and Luffy not really wanting to like electrocute her would just allow it to happen, and pretty much immediately they would arrive at the other end of the island, and they would see a massive ship in front of them. Realizing that Luffy was just carrying her over here because it would be a lot faster this way, Basically just asks with a little bit of a pout for Luffy to put her down, and Luffy would do so and say, Oh, uh, sorry about that. I just figured you'd want to be over here a little bit quicker, and also you kind of helped with the whole directions part of it, because I'm not really that great with that kind of thing. Nami giving him a little bit of a glare, with also a little bit of a <laughs> blush on her face, would just give him a pout and say, It's, it's fine. It's whatever. And so you'd see a giant ship, and we would also see Usopp arriving. We would also see Zoro arriving sometime after that, because he didn't get pushed down the slope by Nami, because obviously that didn't happen, because Luffy just picked her up and ran over. And so we would see all of them waiting at the top, and Luffy, looking over at Usopp, basically just asked a very simple question. Can we just get rid of them? Luffy, or Usopp looking over at him, the questioning look on his face would say, what do you mean, get rid of them? Luffy, with a lightning bolt in his hand, would say, well, I can do it in one shot. And Zora would look at him and says, well, I want to fight some of them too. Luffy says, well, I can probably power it down to make the strongest of them survive in there. And Zora would just simply nod at this, not really giving a single shit about the grunts that were on the ship. And Luffy would nod. He was going to use his red lightning and just completely eviscerate the entire ship along with every single crew member on board, but he's not going to now because he's just going to leave a couple of them alive, specifically three, you know who I'm talking about. And so Luffy would have a lightning bolt appear in his hand as he raises it towards the sky, and thunderclouds would begin to gather above them. This is the first time that they've seen Luffy do something of this sort, and they're wondering exactly what he's about to do until something appears in the sky. Yes, a massive thunder dragon. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing Naruto into this. I, I can do that if I want to, right? Like, come on now, come on. And so the thunder dragon would roar before launching itself down as Luffy mutters under his breath. Period. And so the giant lightning dragon would crash down onto the ship, completely blowing it to smithereens and only leaving three people alive. This would all obviously be the Nian Van brothers, I want to say, along with Django. And so, they are completely and utterly shocked by this, including Zoro, because he also realizes the fact that Luffy could have done something stronger. That was him holding back in order to make some of them survive, and Nami would also realize this, but Usopp is just too shocked to even realize this point. And Nami at this point is thinking, can he, 
can he really do it? Can he, could he possibly get rid of them for me? No, no, I can't, I can't bring somebody like him into it. It's, this is my problem. And so we have Nami still being that same fearful self because of everything that has happened. She basically thinks Arlong is like completely invincible. And so she doesn't want to bring somebody as nice as Luffy into it. Yes, Nami would completely trust Luffy at this point and actually wants to be his friend. But she also doesn't want to bring him into this kind of situation. And so we see the three people basically swimming onto the shore with burn marks all over their body. And Luffy looks over at Zoro and says, All right, I'll let you guys deal with the rest of them. I don't really care anymore. As he would just sit down on the slope and kind of just lay back down and look up into the sky. Getting shark teeth, Nami would yell at him to go help out too, but Zoro would just give a grin and says, This is exactly what we were asking for, I was asking for. And so he would launch himself down towards the other people down there. And of course, he has no injuries at this point. He doesn't have any injuries that are going to like upset him or anything like that, like a stab mark or a stab wound on his stomach that Buggy did in the original series. And so he would pretty quickly and easily get rid of all three of them because all of them are also injured because they were also burned and had electric shock going through their bodies. And so they can't move the same way that they would normally. And so this is the scene that Captain Kuro would come up upon. His entire ship gone, along with only three members that he can even see. And all of them are also unconscious with the blood basically cooling down beneath them. He would get a tick mark over his head and says, useless, utterly useless, as he looks down at the four people that were guarding the island. And he realizes that these four, or you know, specifically Luffy if we're really thinking about it, actually managed to completely guard the island from his crew. He would get pissed by this, but then he would take off his, or basically pull out his gloves, and cat blades would basically appear above them. And so he would push up his glasses in the same weird way that he does, basically just using his palm and he would mutter a couple words under his breath, Shakushi. And he would disappear from everybody's sight, <laughs> except Luffy, as cut marks would appear all around the walls and the floor. Luffy, looking at him, realizes he doesn't even know where he's going, and he would just sigh and say, What an idiot, he doesn't even know where he's going, he has no awareness. And he would appear in front of him, grabbing him by the face, before slamming him into the ground. Not as hard as he did with Buggy, because he's not completely pissed by this point, at least not yet. But this is where we see Kaya also arriving at the scene, as she screams at Kuro, or Clahador, that's, I, I finally figured out what his name was, that why was he doing this? Why, why do all of this? And don't, don't, don't you remember the memories that we had? And Kuro would look over at her, and he would just give a evil smirk. And he says that none of that ever mattered, and it was all just for his plan, and Kaya would start crying at this point, but Luffy would simply knock him out because he doesn't really care about this whole situation anymore, and he just wants to get it over with. And Usopp would walk over to Kaya and give her a hug, trying to comfort her and all of that, and we would have this happy scene where we see all of this going down. And as they're about to set sail, we would see Usopp basically rolling down the hill on with his giant bag behind him, and he would be asking them to stop him. And so, doing so, Luffy and Zora would simply stick out their legs and stop him dead in his tracks, and he would get up and say, thanks, a little bit peeved at the situation at the same time. And he would say that he was going to set sail as well, and maybe they would meet out on the open sea. Luffy and Zoro, giving him a little bit of a strange look, would say, What are you talking about? Just get on board. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, they <laughs> they got married too. <laughs> that, that was kind of like a big moment for them, but at this point everybody knows, so it doesn't really matter. So they would get on Mary, and they would get on board, and they would basically be telling Usopp to get on board as well. Usopp would yell that he's going to be the captain, and they would give him a blank stare and say, If you can beat Luffy... And Usopp would say, all right, never mind, I'll be the marksman then. And so they would get another new crewmate. However, that is where I am going to be leaving this part off. 
Thank you guys for stepping in to enjoy part 2, like and subscribe if you watch till the end, and I'll see you guys in part 3.